Who's he says here? On a whim, James challenged his friend Susan to model the movement of a chewed up piece of gum stuck to the rim of a rolling wheel with a radius of one meter. To simplify the situation, Susan drew the diagram of a circle to represent the wheel and imagined the gum as a point on the circle. Furthermore, she assumes that the center of the wheel was moving to the right at a constant speed of one meter per second, as shown in the diagram. Now, at time t, which is equal to zero seconds, the piece of gum was directly to the left of the center of the wheel, as indicated in the diagram above. What is the first time that the gum was at the top position of the wheel. Okay, so since it is rolling at one meter per second and we have a radius of one meter, okay, it will have made a complete turn after our two pi seconds. Okay. So rotating clockwise at a constant rate of one radian per second. Remember, we like these because the, the radius of the circle is equal to one, so we're good. Hence, the top position was reached after the gum rotated what? So to go from here Oops. To go from here to here to the top, what type of rotation do we have? Well, that would be a rotation of pi over 2, right? So that would be pi over 2 seconds. That's how we would figure that out. It's just a rotation of pi over 2. And we like that because if the radians are equal to uh, 1 meter, and that's the same speed, constant speed of 1 meter per second. Now, so this is pi over 2. Now, what is the first time that the gum was, again, directly to the left of the center of the wheel? Now, the only thing I don't like about this is you really don't know if you're starting from here or here or at the top, but let's act like we're just starting again right here. Well, we would know that to get all the way back around, that is simply 2 pi seconds. I guess I need to write it up here in terms of seconds. And we can convert it to seconds. Why are we able to convert it to seconds? Because we have one radius of one meter. So we have one rad right, per our second. Okay. So let's go to page six. B says, after doing some initial calculations, as in part A and B, Susan realized that the height of the gum is a function of time. She let VT stamp her vertical height of the gum from the ground at the time of T seconds. So VT, find the formula for her function. Okay. So what would we do? Think about this. We're here. Well, how high are we? The radius is 1, right? So we're going to start with 1 because that's where we're starting at. Okay. Think of it like our uh, vertical movement. Okay, so we're going to start over here with plus 1, because that's where we're starting at. Now, we would also say that we're at sine of what? What is going to be our 
our following. What did we say was going to be? Two pi over, and what was going to be a complete rotation? Two, right? It was going to have to do a complete rotation at two, so that's just pi. Okay. Now, think of it like this: our displacement is what? However many seconds in time. That's what we're talking about. And it's a built-in negative. Okay, so we're going to have that as our formula. That was like an H. Let me rewrite that. Plus our one. Now, what is the smallest possible value of t for which v of t is equal to zero? What does the value of t represent in terms of this situation? So we want this sine function to equal zero. Okay, so we would have to say 1 plus um, well let's keep it the way we have it. We want sine, what is the least? Okay, so sine of t is plus the 1 is equal to 0. Now, when would that occur? When will we take our start right here in time and make sine equal well sine is zero where it's at but it says what is the smallest possible value so we got to have some type of value so sine is zero here okay well where is sine zero again here so what would that be in terms of time that would be when t is equal to 3 pi over 2. Because that's just 180 degrees. Okay. Don't let this starting position throw you off. We're still going 180 degrees to sine of 0, which is going to be equal to the sine of 3 pi over 2. And now if you think of that, what is the sine of 3 pi over 2? Well, the sine, if we drew this, 3 pi over 2 is down here. The sine is 0, negative 1. Well, negative 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. That's how you would get that. Okay. Uh, next, Susan, imagine that the wheel was rolling along the horizontal axis of a coordinate system with the distance along the horizontal axis given in units of meters, the height along the vertical axis is also given in meters, at time equal to zero, the center of the wheel has a coordinate of one and one, so that the gun was initially at position zero one. Okay, so yeah, that's where we, we're at zero one, the center is at one one. Does or what do, what is the x coordinate of the position of the gum after pi over two? So if we rotated pi over two, since we're going in that direction, it tells us what is the x. Well, the x would be one. Okay. Let's see here, what else do we know? After pi seconds, okay. So it wants to know what is x after how many pi's? Well, that's simply just one. How many pi's did we go? We went pi over two. 